Okay, I'm summarizing the law of faith today. Get ready, something's about to happen in your life. Oh, <laughs> I'm not hearing your excitement. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm about to change my life. How many of you have gotten better and better with God as this series has been going on? How many of you noticed that some useless kind of worries disappeared from you? Some useless worries. Someone said, my life is better. How many of you notice there are testimonies very easily around you? Go and share that testimony. Stop with your hand. James chapter 2, quickly. This is the law of faith, part 4. And this is the, summer, um, the summary. This, and I'm summarizing the law of faith today. And we're trusting the Lord that we'll do justice. There, there is so much about faith. I have not taught you the spirit of faith. I have not taught you the seed of faith. But let's just stop at the law of faith. Maybe next year we'll touch those ones. Praise God. Are you being blessed? If you're being blessed, let me hear your excitement. Amen. God is about to change your life. God is about to change your life. Now, today's service is going to be very prophetic. I'm preaching for less than, less than one hour. Less than one hour. I had to work on a lot of things. I watched my video last week. My preaching was too long. And I said to myself, I said, I'm not preaching this long again. So, listen. That's why we, we grow every day. Hallelujah. Are you ready? James chapter 2, 18 to 22. Very quickly. Can I have my timer? Can I have my timer, please? James chapter 2, from verse 18 to 22. Praise God. Okay. Can we stand as we read this, the, the word of God? It's an um, honor for God's word. Hallelujah. There's a little trouble on Twitter. I'll be fine. Yeah, a man, say, a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Verse 19. Everybody. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and what? And tremble. Verse 20. But will thou now know. Sorry. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is what? How we preach to your neighbor. Say neighbor faith without work is dead timer this time is too much oh. and i don't start hallelujah okay now let's read the next verse quickly everybody want to go We're going to read it again, not murmuring, read it loud and clear. Was not Abraham a father justified by works when he had offered? Time, give me just one hour. When he offered Isaac his son on the altar. The next verse. Seest thou how faith was wrought? Sorry, seest thou how faith wrought with his work and by works was made, was faith made? perfect hallelujah now look at verse 23 and the scripture was fulfilled which said abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for what righteousness and he was called the friend of god look at your neighbor's a neighbor a man was called the friend of god be seated how many of you want to be friends of god Kai. one time the bible says and god said I will not do anything unless I talk to my friend Abraham. He said, I want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, but even in my omnipotent nature, as God that I am, I don't take permission from anybody. He said, but I have a friend that I can't do something without telling him. How many of you know that there are certain things you will do and if you don't tell your friends, your friends will be offended. Am I communicating now? So, like, like some ladies now, you're getting married and you don't tell your friend. Some of them will not attend why because why didn't you tell me the reason why friendship is very precious is because friendship is not just what we call friendship friendship is partnership a man grew to a level and god began to look at a mortal man and say this man is my friend he's my friend now let me ask you a question if you are the friend of a rich man or let's say you are the friend of the governor will you be begging huh? if you are governor's best friend will you be begging you won't beg. 
If you are governor's management, you will not beg. If you are president's management, you will not beg. If your best friend is the captain or, or, or the controller of the custom, you won't ask for a job. Am I communicating here? You will be the one giving people jobs. Now, the Lord said, the maker of heaven and earth says, Abraham is my friend. Can I have that scripture? Let me have that scripture very quickly. He said, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. What did this man do that made him the friend of God? The law of faith part four. Look at neighbor, say neighbor. Faith without work is dead. Now hear this and understand what I'm trying to say. I've been teaching you faith by saying, by speaking, by believing. But I want you to understand that if I don't conclude with this, all I've taught you will not work. It's just like a man buying a car, putting fuel, putting everything, but you refuse to use the key to turn on the ignition. Am I communicating to somebody here? You are loaded to move now, but all you need to do is to turn on the ignition. Turn on the ignition. Have you seen a dead man before? Can a dead, can a dead billionaire give you money? He's a billionaire, right? Or he was a billionaire. But can he help you? Can help you. Can a dead trillionaire change your life? He's a trillionaire or he was a trillionaire. But he can't change your life. As mighty as he is, be seated on. As mighty as he is, he can't have any impact in your life. Why? Because his word is dead. Faith can be dead. Faith can be what? Now, hear this. It is faith, but it is dead. Why is it faith? It's not believing. You have grown from believing to faith. Remember, Jesus said, if your faith is as tiny as mustard seed, you will move mountains. Now, this is faith because all the parameters of faith, scripturally, you meet it. Is it believing? Is it sight? You have sight. Is it speaking? You speak. Faith cycle, you know everything, but your faith can still be dead. Now, please, let me teach you something. Anytime you study the Bible, understand sometimes the writers. This scripture, this James we are reading now, it was not just written by one of the apostles. James is one of the dearest apostles of Jesus. Now, there were three that were his favorites. Peter, James, and... Peter, James, and... Now, understand that James was not just his favorite. James was his brother. If you can't leave, please, we're not arguing. James was his brother. Am I communicating now? So, this man knows a lot. He, he, he doesn't just know by revelation. He has been close to this man. He says, you are preaching faith. He says, show me your faith. He said, I will show you my works. He said, I will show you my faith by works. Let me say this, there is no time. I'm timed. Understand, if you read Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 is the book of faith where the record of the men and the giants of faith was recorded. Now, notice that each of every, each and every one of them, their testimony of faith was not because they believed God, but was because they did something that showed their belief in God. Their testimony of faith was not because they believed God, but was because they did something that showed their belief in God. Let me have Hebrews chapter 11. Quickly please. From verse 2 verse 3. Let me have verse 3. Quickly. Verse 4. There's no time. Let, let's keep all this. It says, By faith, Abel offered unto God more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaker this is a mystery we'll go into that but what I want to show you is this that by faith Abel offered unto God more excellent sacrifice somebody say works now let me have the next verse verse 5 it says by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated it for his translation was that he had this testimony that he pleased God somebody say walk the next verse quickly it says the next one we know these ones. He says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things that which he has not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. So Noah did not confess away the storm. He did not confess away the rain. He did not confess away the flood. You're not hearing me. Are you with me? In as much as there is a place to confession, and I've taught you that. 
And I've built you so strong on that. And there is a place to believe in and see with the eyes of your spirit. But there is a place to walk. Place to. They look at your neighbor. Help me push your neighbor. Say neighbor. There is a place to walk. Now let, let me show you something quickly. Very. He says, moved with fear. Prepare and act. To save God told him, it's going to rain. He didn't say, I'm a man of faith. I can't die anyhow. He did something. Am, am I talking to somebody here? Now, let's have the next verse. Just want to show them more two or three examples. We'll pray. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called out, he was called to go out into a place which he should not, which he should receive after, for, after, calm down, into a place which he should receive, <laughs> which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. The next verse, the next verse. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. The next verse. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder is the ma and maker is God. The next verse. He says, though through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child. When she did this one now is a product of faith because she judged him faithful who had promised. The next verse. Let me show I want to show you something. He says, the next one, the next one. This one's a benefits of faith okay the next one can i see something okay the next one okay 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 this is strong we'll come back to this later before i summarize let's read verse 16 okay you see now but now they desire a better country that is heavenly wherefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he had prepared for them a city he had prepared for them a city yet he told the man to leave his house and go and look for that city the next verse take note of that he said, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. So, that Abraham was called the father of faith was not because he had faith in God. was because he offered up Isaac. Am I communicating here? Abraham is not the father of faith because he had faith in God or he believed God. He said, by faith, Abraham, whom, when he was tried. Someone say, when he was tried. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, when God tries you, will you fail? God does not tempt men, but God tries men. He says, when thou... When thou goest through the fire, I'll be with you. God does not tempt any, any man. Every man being tempted is tempted when he's drawn away by his lust. But God tries men. Even your works will be tried by fire. Am I communicating now? He said, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. The next verse. By faith. By faith. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So in case you are wondering what this man did. God didn't say, I will make you the father of all nations. He said, it is through Isaac, I will make you the father of all nations. It's very different. When God comes to a man and says, I will make you the father of all nations, that means God can use anybody. Am I communicating now? But when God says, I will use this man to make you the father of all nations, and God tells you, he says, sacrifice that same man. It's as good as your promise being aborted. Am I speaking to somebody here? Let me have the next verse quickly, please. God is doing a mighty work in the spirit. You don't understand. He says, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. Understand this. He said to God, he said, there is nothing I will give to you that you can't give me back. Are we together now? When you see certain men do certain things, they're not doing it because they have, they're doing it because they are men of faith. God tells you, I've blessed you with this. Through this, you will become a billionaire. And he says, take this, put on the altar, be seated. I'm not raising anything. I'm teaching you what we do. He said, God, you are the one that gave me this, and this is the promise. From this, you will make me full of all nations. And we are asking for it. He said, I'll give it to you with all pleasure. There is no faith greater than that. Let's have the next verse, and then I'll pray with this. It says, by faith, Isaac being blessed. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. So it takes faith to understand the things to come. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. This year will not end until I testify. Bless your year. Say in the name of Jesus. This year will not end until I testify. Now hear this. Hear this. Look at what James said. 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 Verse 21. James chapter 2 verse 21. He says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Who is the father of faith? Abraham. How was he justified? Not by faith but by works. By works. He said when he, when he had offered up Isaac. So he was not justified when he believed God. He was justified when he offered up Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Verse 22. 
Seest thou how faith wrought with his work? And by works was faith made what? How many of you want your faith to produce results for you? Tell neighbor, say neighbor, look for the corresponding action. I'm teaching you this. Without this, all you know will be a scam. All you know will be a scam. All you know will be a scam. Hear this. Let me say this. If everybody that knows faith, practice faith, there will be no poor man in the world. There will be no poor man. But the problem is who and who can pay the price? Is it not only talking? Who will talk? You are not hearing me. You come to church, they charge you. You lift your hand and speak. It doesn't change like that. There is a corresponding action. He said, by works, his faith was what? Made what? Perfect. Now understand that faith without work is, is like, is like a, a man carrying a corpse. Pastor Josiah, as you live here today, one of the questions you should ask yourself is, what is the corresponding action that will complement my faith? Listen to this. Can I have volume, please? I want to preach. I'm not teaching. What is the corresponding action that will complement my faith? Hear this. For Abraham, it was carry your son put on the altar. For the woman of the issue of blood is if I can touch the hem of his garment. Hear this. If you like, confess from now to tomorrow. If you don't take action, nothing will happen. Hallelujah. We have found the right word. We have found the right revelations. We have sown seeds of faith. Seeds of words. Now, the next question is, what action am I to take that will show the faith I am professing? I'm going to use myself as a little example. One time I was praying, the Lord blessed me with something and I was happy, thanking the Lord. The Lord said, that's something I blessed you with. Because I was trying to do a, pro a some, something. And he said, I was asking for, and he gave me the exact same thing I needed for what I wanted to do. And he now said to me, he said, you will finish this thing this year. I said, amen. And he now said to me, he said, carry that same thing I gave you and give me. Now, my faith is that God has answered my prayer. Am I right? And now the same God is telling me that same thing. Give it to me. Faith is not when you say I believe. Faith is when you say, when you show you believe. I took it without fear. Because I know that faithful is he that has promised. You are not hearing me. The woman of the issue of blood said to herself, she said, if I will touch the hem of his garment. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Say your faith, act your faith. I can't hear you. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Say your faith, act your faith. This is the missing link. This is the missing link in the church. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's not for children. It's not for children. Everyone can say, but how many persons can press? I will show you two things then. I will pray with you. Are, we, are you with me at all? Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. My life is about to change. I don't want to read the story of the woman. You know the story already. There's no time. The woman said to herself, he said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, he said, this blood and this, and this issue of blood, he says, it will dry. It is easy to say, but can you touch the hem of his garment? Now, let me explain to you two things about that woman. Number one, the Bible said she didn't touch his shoulder. She didn't touch his head. She touched what? The hem. Now, if you know all those kind of Sudan men of God wear, priest, the hem is somewhere here. Am I right? Now, for somebody to touch the hem of his garment means that she, bent, she must have bent down. Or it's possible she was crawling. Understand that? Because if it is the hem, then you must be crawling. Now, ask yourself, how, are you aware that when, when a governor comes or a celebrity comes to a place, sometimes the people that, that they match there, they are plenty. They have to bring in, um, what is it called? Crowd control measures. Am I communicating here? To see to it that there is no stampede. Everybody is careful. 
Now, but here is not just this a miracle worker that raised the dead. Imagine the crowd that was following him. Now, understand this. The Bible says, and multitudes follow him. Now, if you study your, your, the Bible, the word multitude speaks of 5,000 men and. Whenever you see 5,000 men, that is a multitude. So, Bible says, multitudes. I'm not talking about women, no. In a church where there are 5,000 men, women will be 25. 25,000. Am I speaking to somebody here? Why? Because a woman was the first to carry the gospel. When he resurrected, it was a woman that saw him first. Am I putting to somebody here? Please be seated. So imagine the crowd of people that we are thronging the Lord. And yet, she went on her knees and she was crawling. Here it is. Your life, your faith will not change you until you take risks. Your faith will not change you. Can I have, can I have volume, please? Good sound, good sound. I just need volume. Your faith will not change you until you take risk. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I, I can't feel you. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. You are taking risk this week. And your risk, God will honor it. I'm not hearing that amen. I'm not hearing that amen. I said God will honor that risk. In case you are still doubting, I will show you something else. Hear this. That woman was risking her life. She could have been matched to death. There are certain steps you take for God that are risks. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. Am I communicating here? When a lecturer says to you, if you don't sleep with me, you will fail. You tell him, I fail. But in your mind, you, you have faith. Am I communicating? It's a risk. When the lecturer says to you, he says, if you don't sleep with me, you won't graduate. I look at him, eyeball to eyeball. And he says, sir, I'm not going to sleep with you and I will graduate from this school. You will see it and you will sign it. Those are the kind of people we are raising, you know, mad people. Let me tell you, this world is not, is not for normal men. It's not for normal men. You need an atom of Holy Ghost madness. Look at the neighbor, the neighbor. You need to have some Holy Ghost Costco. You guys are you guys are too packaged these days. You guys are cool, no? Do you want to shout fire now? You soon jump up and shout fire. You guys are doing yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Am I communicating here? That way, when we put AC in the that the evil now be sleeping. Now hear this. Hear this. The woman could have been, could have been, I don't know, I don't know the word to use, but she could have been matched or, or what's the word? She would have been stamped to death. Anything, you understand it? And the woman said, I have two things to choose. This issue of blood or to be healed. All death in a death. If issue of blood kill me, I will still die. You're not hearing me. I would, I would together. If issue of blood kill me, I will still. If I go there and touch him, maybe I will still. But one has hope, one does not have hope. When I eat my seed, I will still be broke. When I give it, I will still be broke. But there is a possibility that when I give it, there is a harvest. My God, you're not hearing me now. What changes? It's not. Well, see, if it is by what, everybody will be a billionaire. Who can't speak? Who can believe? Who can see with the eyes of the spirit? Who can see? Who can, who can visualize? She said, if I can touch. Now, let me say this to you. You must say your faith. Someone say, say. Now, let me say this to you. Before you take any action, be seated. Before you take any risk, before you take any seed, make sure you speak over it. Don't just go and look at that man and say to him, he say, oh God, I will pass this course. Whether I sleep with you or not. And you now go back and you are snoring for 24 hours. Now, hear this. Faith must be said and must be acted. You wake up in the morning, you're coming to the Lord, you say, today, 
if I can set my eyes on that man of God and he will say anything related to me, whether he calls my name or not, I'll be free. You must say it. Don't just believe it. You must what? That's where we are missing it. Most of us, we believe that when we come to church, God will visit us, right? But did you say it before coming? You wake up in the morning. You say, today is Saturday. As I step my feet to the ministry, whether he calls my name or not, but so long there is a declaration that looks like what I'm going through, or God visits someone that looks like what I'm going through, he say, I shall be healed. Now, when you say it, you come to church and you are listening. You are listening for the word, waiting for the steering of the water. You are not just listening. Am I, am I talking to a child of God here? You are not just listening to a message. You are a Caparian Amatia. The Bible says, and the man, and Paul saw him and asked, and Peter also, looking at the man, seeing that he had faith to be healed said to him rise up and walk look at him also say your faith act your faith say that say say your faith act your faith look at the neighbor say say your faith act your faith now you say to yourself as i'm going to the interview today the moment they see me they will favor me you must say it don't just don't just say i believe as i go I, in jesus name as i go say it If I can touch, okay, why didn't the woman just stand up and go and touch the hem of his garment? There is something she know. I don't know who taught her that thing. But sometimes when your when your time has come, even the spirit within you will begin to lead you. See, there was no preacher of faith in that in those days. Oh, are you listening to me? There was no what? There is no what? There was no preacher of faith in those days that could teach her this is the step to activate faith. Number one, say it. Number two, act it. But there is something I know about Kairos moment. When your time comes, he says he will order your feet. Now let me say this. He says it is God in you who wills through you and to do of his good pleasure. So there are times that God will cause you. Am I communicating here? To have certain revelations. You know you are not the one that taught it out. Who taught that woman? Moses looked at the rest of his stretch his rod. But who taught Joshua? That he should speak to the soul. Who taught him? You taught Moses taught him. He's a liar. Such great things are not handed over to children. There was no record that Moses taught him with the ways of God. God showed Moses his ways. There was no record that Moses taught Joshua. It's either he learned by observation or he received the whispers of the spirit. Someone said the whispers of the spirit. I can't hear you. Say it now. Say the whispers of the spirit. Do you know as you are sitting here, the Holy Ghost can be whispering something to you. Say, do, do this. Do this. It will change your life. And the whisper is the whisper that has your turn around. And what that woman did has become a principle. Say it! Understand this. Understand this. Number two, she had to move. If you are if you are in this place and you have ever donated blood to somebody, you know that you feel dizzy. I'm asking somebody here. You feel what? Now ask yourself a woman that's been bleeding for 12 years. What will it take her to crawl? Hear this. Any preacher that makes you feel that any everything in life is easy is a 419. Look at your neighbor, say 419. No, 419 is small. It's 4218. 8218. Am I communicating here? You must take risk. Number two. In the Jewish custom, let me, let me explain this to you. Understand this. When a woman is bleeding, you don't come to church. In those days. In those days, not now. You don't come to church. You don't come close to church. You will stay outside church. Hear this. For each bleeding, you need seven days after your bleeding to be purified. 
extra seven days. So imagine a woman that has bled for 12 years. How long does she need to be purified? You bleed once, you wait for what? Seven. Please, am I talking to you? If I'm talking to you, wave your hands. Okay. Now, you bleed once, you wait for how many days? Now, you bleed for 12 years, you wait for how long? So, hear this. Is, this thing is dangerous. I'm teaching you now. So, this thing is, she's, even if she's healed, she has been condemned. Are, are you with me now? Even if she's healed, she has been what? Okay. 12 years. That means, even before you die, you have not finished serving the purification process. Now, hear this. In the Jewish custom, when you are bleeding and you know you are bleeding, and then you touch a holy man or a righteous man or a priest, and you know they will stone you to death. They will what? They will stone you. That was why when Jesus said, who touched me? The woman was hiding. Because she knows what she has done. Yes. If you know you are bleeding and you touch it, because the Bible says, if you if an unclean person touches the clean, the clean will become unclean. So in their custom, before you enter the law, those days is not the day you will finish drinking alcohol or fornicating and you come and sit there and be shouting praise God. That one, if you enter, you will die. As you are entering, the glory of God will just kill you. So the woman said to herself, she said, if he's die, let them stone me. But you see this thing, I can't live with it again. I'm about to make the next point. I'm about to make the next point. Are, are we together? Is God blessing somebody here? Now, understand this in life. That when she said to herself, I will go there, she has already signed her debt. When Abraham said, I will offer up Isaac, he has already signed that his generation can close. He said, I have two options. Be a father of one child. That if, are you aware that if, if, even if Abraham said, I won't kill Isaac, something else could have killed Isaac. They're not hearing me. They're not hearing me. Isaac can go out and die. If you don't sacrifice Isaac, something else can take Isaac. So, the woman was risking being stoned to death. Now, you touch one person, he becomes unclean. And now you are not just touching one person, you are touching a multitude. You are touching a multitude. And if they find out that you are unclean, you are, you are dead. It's just like somebody now, death, the hungry, you now enter. Jameko. You are Jameko. You are a living dead man. Now, those men were worse than those, those people. The woman said to herself, she said, if not die, make her die. Here is the second point or the third point you need to take note of this. Here is until you are no longer willing or you are no longer able to stay with that condition, that condition will not live. Until you are tired. Until you can no longer manage it. It won't end. How many of you can manage poverty? You will continue being poor. I'm telling the gospel truth. You must get desperate. The word is desperation. The word is what? The word is what? The word is what? Until. Hear this. Until you say to yourself. I can't manage it again. You can't, you can't end it. Kind it. Men will come, they will look at you, they will tell you, We are coming to your family this December. And on that day, they will off their phone. You will put, I'm telling you, this thing they have, you will put canopies, you are waiting for them. They will tell you, eh, Sister, sorry, oh, my mother is sick. It happened once, it happened twice, it happened three times, and you are still just shaking your head, shaking your head. It will happen again and again. Until you make up your mind. This situation, I cannot manage it. It's either I die or it dies. One must die. Is God blessing the child of God here? If God is blessing you, wave your hands. Let me see. 
am I communicating here? You have to look at your family and say to them, you say, this poverty enough is what? Enough is what? Enough is what? This sickness in my body, enough is what? This disgrace in my lineage, enough is what? I can't bear it anymore. Please help me put your neighbor's neighbor. If you can still manage it, you can't expel it. Sometimes are you hearing me? If you can still manage trekking, you can't stop trekking. No? Somebody's life is about to change now. I, I believe as the woman was moving, somebody was telling her, she said, Madam, you will die. You. The woman said to herself, Am I leaving? How is it that anytime I want to pay for house rent, I will have high BP first before I pay my house rent? Is he alive? I want to pay my children's school fees. I will have to go and beg. Can I go to, with my voice? I will have to go and beg. Beg for food, beg for water before I eat. Is he alive? You're a man. If your wife does not feed you, you will not eat. Is he alive? You're a lady. If you don't sleep with men for money, you can't, you can't feed. Is he alive? Is he alive? You're a young boy. If you don't, if you don't dupe somebody with 419, you can't eat. Is he alive? Someone came to me, one of my friends. He had so much money. I told him, I said, no matter the money you have, you don't have a life. I said, go and look for a life. I told him, I said, go and look for a life. Because any life that depends on duping someone to eat, you don't have a life. I'm not condemning nobody. Nobody's holy. Am I communicating here? But I'm telling him, I said, if you don't, if you don't get something doing, eh? you can't keep doing this forever. You open a good amount of your wife, why you are me? Is he alive? Go and ask everybody that have made money that way. They are hungry now. I'm telling you from experience. Almost everybody. Because one thing, you, your mind will tell you that you, it will be happening every day. Are we together? Your mind, if that time when you go, it will, it will tell you, say, it, 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 nah, so it will be. No, be so. Gamor. Get a business. Get something doing for yourself. A boy came to the mother. The mother called me and said, Prophet, please, be near me. Go. I said, Mommy, again, what is happening? He said, I'm saying, go to your phone. I said, Wow. I said, Good. I said, Can you name me? I said, I'm happy, happy. I'm 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 I have a lot of things to do with money, but not, not, not wasting money. Am I communicating here? I'm not condemning anybody. I'm telling you, find something doing. Find something doing. Hunger will kill you. Hear this. Hear this. Man of God. Any pastor that you see Eh? That if his member does not give him money, he can't eat. He's a useless man. Now let me teach you something. Let me teach you. My spiritual man. He said to me, said something. He said, number one, a pastor should not be a businessman. You can't combine the two. You can't combine the two. You can't combine the two. Are we together? You, you, it's not you. You will. If you combine the two, two things are involved. It's either you are not. You, you will serve one, and you will not serve. You will not do the other one. You can't serve two masters. You see this thing? You can't combine two things. But no matter what, find a way to sustain yourself. See, let me tell you. The day you begin to combine ministry and business, you begin to go down spiritually. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There is something. There is such thing as you are doing, you are working and you are, you are being paid. Are, are you with me? You are a pastor. You are a salary earner. Wonderful. Beautiful. 
they are paying you monthly, beautiful. But you see that one, if you go to shop, you have to hustle for money till night. You can't be productive. You cannot. I'm telling you. You can't. What am I saying? But even at that, still find a way to be productive. And that's why good sons take care of their fathers. Because scripture says the priest should not labor. Should focus. The Levites have no other portions. Their portion is to serve the table, stand before the Lord morning and night. As a matter of fact, a priest should stand before God always. And that's your assignment. Are you hearing me? I told my spiritual father, I told him something yesterday, I said, I said, sir, I said, sir, God, God has sent me to you as a son of consolation. My spiritual mentor is a billionaire. He's not a millionaire. Sometimes if I'm sending my tithe, I'm, I'm ashamed. I send my tithe every day. I don't, I don't wait for months for me to give my tithe. I'm on, hey, you, you, they might be watching me. I don't give my tithe like I wait for one month. I will not give. No, I don't do that. Hey, shut up. I don't give my tithe monthly. Sometimes, as he's entering, I'm giving it. But as I'm giving it, I'm ashamed. But he said, he called me one day, he said, come. His spiritual father is Bishop David Oyedebo. A direct son. And then he said to me, he said, when I started paying tithe to Bishop David Oyedebo, he said, I started from giving sometimes 30,000. He said, he said, some people give to the ministry account, but I give to his personal account. He told me. He said, do you know what it means sending 30,000 to bishop's account? Now, disgrace. But he said, it's not about the amount, it's about the heart. He said, but now, they give not in, they give not, not, not in millions, but they give in tens of millions weekly. Not everybody is suffering, sir. Help me put your neighbor. Say, neighbor, not everybody is suffering. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop deceiving yourself. Not everybody is suffering. Say, Nigeria is a lie. Not everybody is suffering. As you are crying, and there are people that are praying that this condition should not end. I'm not joking. There are people praying that Nigeria should not get better. The day it gets better, hunger will kill them. And he said to me, he said, he said he was ashamed, but God told him one day, he said, are you giving to the bishop or are you giving to me? Now, Genti, now let, let me tell you what I'm saying all this. He said, but now, they don't give in millions, they give in tens of millions weekly. I now open my mouth with my small pocket and I say, sir, I will be your son of consolation. Are you mad? Someone that gives tithe in tens of millions, how will you be a son of consolation? You that your tithe is not up to you understand? He said to me, he said, he said, priests should focus on their assignment. I said to my sister, focus on your assignment, I'll take care of you. Only now come one million times. But I, I, I know faith. I speak faith. Am I communicating here? I'm not speaking my, am I communicating here? I'm not speaking my account balance. I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking how much in my account. Sir! Focus on yourself. I'll take care of you. And he said something to me. He said, Now on his personal. Can I speak over your life? Lift your hands. If you, if you want to stand, you can stand now. In the name of Jesus, whom we preach, through your commitment to God, the vineyard of the prosperous. Hear that amen as you turn down. Let me hear that amen loud and clear. Sit down. I have just few minutes and I will be done. I looked at him and said, Sir, I understand the system. You don't combine two things. You don't. I'm telling you. Sometimes you will come to altar like this, you'll be empty. You will just use faith to minister. You will not understand. Ministry with faith and ministry with anointing, they are two different things. So. I'm saying some things I'm not, I should not be saying. Am I speaking to a child of God here? Anointing, serious faith. 
but both of them are powerful. Jesus didn't just operate by faith. He operated by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He operated by the anointing. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and what? And power. With the Holy Ghost and power. Why, why did I say that? I'm saying this to tell you that a man that depends on another to survive is not a life. Help me put your neighbor's neighbor. That life must end this year. Somebody here, you are feeling I'm preaching to you. Yes, I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to you. I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You need a life where you will stand. When, see, like, I'm sorry to say this. I don't care who leaves me. I don't care. I don't care. Your addition to me is for your own good. Because what did I give? I should give another person. You're not hearing me. Am I communicating now? The man has become spiritually self-sufficient. We know how to abase. We know how to abound. It's a how-to. This man say, hey, I'm not blessing your minister. I'll say, young man, you're a poor man. Come, let's raise you. What you couldn't do, he would do seven times. It's a system. One of my sons was sending me a testimony. I think I, I showed it to Pastor Melody. He said to me, he said, sir, he, said he has two, two of his young men that have been working so hard, working so hard, legitly doing great works. For many years, they have not seen nothing, one couple. He said, he said, I spoke to you in three days, you made them a millionaire. Man, am, I, am I lying? In three days, in three days, in three days. Daniel, you know what I'm talking about. In three days, I told him, I said, what, what do you want? He said, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, no, Allah. I said, give me three days. From nowhere. Look at him, I said, from nowhere. Is a how to. Is a how to. Please stand up, go to service and tell them, I will not depend on you. Look them, no, no fear them. Pastor, okay? Look, tell him, I will not depend on you, Josiah. Jesus, I'm going to tell you, I will not depend on you. Tell you, Jike. Write down some rubbish that should end. As the year is what? Don't just be fasting and praying. There is a place. Write down some rubbish that should what? If my boyfriend no give me money, I can't make my hair. It must end. Ladies, am I talking to you? Oh, we're going to Oh, re, oh, re, oh, re. If they don't give you money, you won't play to It will. Tell them, say, I can't manage it again. The woman said to herself, She said, It's either I die or this condition dies. One must die. Look at the person, neighbor. Say your faith. Act your faith. Then neighbor say, be desperate about your faith. Jeremiah chapter 29, the Bible says, He says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's the formula. You can seek me, but you will never find me until you seek me with what? Until you seek me with what? Until you seek me with what? How many of you in this place are ready to end this year with dancing? Let me see your hand. Tell about your neighbor. I must end this year with testimony. Hear this. When they tell you don't be desperate, they don't like you. They don't what? They don't what? They don't like you. There is a desperation for progress. 
Dumas said, I must talk. Someone say, I must talk. She said, I will go to a church today. If you don't locate me, I will locate him. Jesus, I know you, you may be too busy to locate me, but me, I will locate you. While I was praying yesterday around 3 a.m., I saw a light. And I saw on that light, I saw the Lord told me, he said, it is time for change of levels. Can you place your hand over your head and begin to speak? Say, I am the one that has that prophecy. Pray, pray. Go ahead. Lord, my level is changing by light. Go ahead. Declare, declare, declare. My level. You are changing by light. Makaparia saperiana. In the name of Jesus. Now, finally, hear this. Hear this. Faith functions by law. Faith functions by law. With, without love, faith is dead. Without action, faith is dead. Without love, also, faith is dead. Faith is there. Faith is there. Faith is there. The Lord said to me so, one day, he said, son, he said, is there anything I've given to you you cannot give back to me? I was thinking, let me tell you, I, I didn't say no. I said yes. Let me, you can't lie to a spirit. He's a, you know, he's a man that doesn't know a spirit that can lie to a spirit. But when you know a spirit, you can't lie to the spirit. I won't tell you what it is. No your business. I told you, my sister, sir, you, now you give me this one, but I can't give you, sir. And guess what? He smiled. And he said to me, he said, I will furnish Jesus in your heart. Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost comes, he will glorify me. When he glorifies Jesus in your heart, everything else matters least in your life. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. And then he sent me to prayer. I prayed for 21 days. Nothing. I continued. Not dry fast though. It was 6 to 6. At, at the end of some days, I won't tell you how many days it lasted. He said to me, he said, your fast will not end until I change your heart. I can't change your life until I change your heart. I was very small then, very small, very small. I can't tell you how old I was, very small. He says, I won't change your life until I change your heart. That time, if I tell you, you will laugh at me, no need. The thing I say I can't give him is, to me, is the whole world. Am I communicating now? But then, the ministry was in need. We needed to pay for some things and get some instruments. If you know me, I've always loved sound. I, I, I can spend anything for sound. Anything. Unless I didn't hear it. But once I, once I have the money, I will spend. And that's why I'm angry when my sound is not good. And he said to me, he said, son, there is a need in church and you are praying to me and you have it. I said, sir, I'm your pastor. He said, there is a need in church and you are praying to me and you have it. He said, don't you know that you are my channel? There is a need in church. You are praying to me and you have it. I say, uh, but the members, I'm a very sincere person. They will give, I will give. All of us will combine. He said, stop praying to me about this matter. The next day I went to pray, his presence was not, I couldn't feel that anointing. His presence is always with us, but I couldn't feel that anointing of the Holy Spirit. I knew that something has. I didn't pray. I just stood up like a lamb that was being led to the slaughter. I went. I said, "Make this, make this, make this, make this." I got an alert: zero, 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 debit, everything. And then while I was crying, he said to me, "He said, I've touched your heart. Now I'll touch your life." That was the day poverty died in my life. Guess what I was struggling with? If I tell you, you will laugh at me. But that time, it was my all and all. You don't know where God wants to take you to. You are the one fighting with what you have. 
Stop looking at Isaac. See the nation. See the nation. A young man, I was preaching somewhere this week, and the young man met me. And then he said to me, he said, sir, I want to carry the grace for the prophetic you carry. I said, no problem. It's very easy. I said, first of all, you do this prayer and, and this fasting, and then when you finish, we'll start from there. He says, sir, you can't do it, that he will die. And the one I told him is preparation, preparation. First of all, you can't, you can't walk in, in the prophetic until your flesh is dead. Your flesh must be dead. Because a man can't walk with a spirit of light when he's darkness. His flesh must die. It's not, it's not anointing. Your flesh must die. Must die. I said to him, I said, this one now just to kill the flesh. Let's kill it. Now. He said, he said Sir, is there any other consecration you know, some people they can speak scriptures. Is there any other consecration? I think I'm not serious. You want to confuse me? Me. Is there any other consecration? I said, go and do the prayer first. He said, he can't do it. I said, I said to him, I said, close your eyes. I said, see the nations. See, Af see Asia. See Africa. See America. Gather in one stadium. See you, through you. Souls are being saved. See through you. Armed robbers are being converted. See through you. Or courtship grandmasters are dropping their child. He said, I will do it. And he's on the fast now. Actually, he called me. Say, I won't die. I said, they do. This morning, he sent me a test. He says, sir, sir, is this fast a test, or I should really, really do it? Because you won't eat food, you won't drink water. He said, okay, sir, can I just be taking small liquid? Small. Li I say, I say, do it. And it's not that he will function in anointing, though. Know? Is that he will operate, you understand, in a level. Because Nkambo, or you know, born with. But there are some things you can do in God, and then it's a gift. You can get the gift, you can get the office. The office is by calling, the gift you can receive. Anybody can have the gift. It's not your business. Am I communicating here? I told him, I said, see Nigeria washed in the blood of Jesus. Rehabok, he said, I see Africa washed in the blood of Jesus. I see Africa washing the blood of Jesus. No wonder the man could spend one million dollars for each crusade. He didn't send. Why? Because he has seen something that money cannot buy. The reason why you are struggling with Isaac is because you have not seen the nations. Look at your neighbor, neighbor, see the nations. The Bible says, for Jesus, for the cross that was set, for the glory that was set before him, he neglected the suffering of the cross. Help me look at your neighbor, say, see the nations. Now, hear this. When you see a young man struggling with fornication, he has not seen the nations. He has not seen the nations. The reason why you are still doing Yahoo is because you feel with small two two hundred dollars, three three hundred dollars, you can be okay. When you don't know that God wants to give you millions of dollars, tell neighbor, say, see the nations. I can't hear you. Look at your neighbor, say, see the nations. Look at your neighbor, say, see the nations. Are struggling with, with crime because if you maybe they will give you $200 or $300, you will not eat. See the nations. People are commanding hundreds of thousands of dollars. A man made, a, a, man, a man controls not his money actually. He's a trader. He controls over $150 million. And people are complaining in Nigeria, Dapu Willis. And they said, This man is a lie. You don't have that kind of money. He said, You are complaining when what I have is a drop from the company where, or from the um, industry where I am. It's a tip of an iceberg. In industry where there is a flow of trillions every day, billions every day. And I have only 150 million and you are complaining. Dollars. And somebody else is getting $1,000 and you, you, want to, you want to use somebody for ritual. Because of $10,000. You're a madman. Look at your neighbor and say, see the nations. Are you aware that you can sit down one idea that comes to your heart? God can change your generation. One idea. One, one, one act, one creation from wisdom, from light can change, can light your generation. See the nations. See the nations. You, you can't live 
You can't leave that your boyfriend. You can't leave that your girlfriend. You have not seen the nations. See! Faith works by love. Galatians 5, verse 6. Quickly. Galatians 5, verse 6. Someone said to me, say, sir, but why do you allow some bad boys to come, come around there? I say, it's not my business. Jesus did not come for the sinner, for the saint. He came for the sinners. Am I communicating here? You can't chase them away. If you chase them away, they will go to native doctors. Or bring them so that they can be changed. Am I communicating now? You change them. If you leave them, they will, you will see the same person killing human beings, using human head for, for sacrifice. But when that same person comes close and he sees the goodness of Jesus, his life is changed. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. It says, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision, verse 16, quickly please. You're giving me verse 6. Oh no, kifu fe na no luya kaya. He bili miri nuro lugi wende redi. Umu no no kigwe ne togi na. Anasi so kaji ho vamdi. Hosanna! Verse 6, sorry. Verse 6. Here's a girl. I will come to 16. I have just one minute. It says, For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. It says, But faith walketh by what? Look at me. Look at me. If there is somebody here that has somebody you cannot forgive, stop declaring nothing will happen. Go and forgive before you declare. Look up here. Look up here. If there is anybody in life, can I, can I shock you? Can I shock you? Nobody is my enemy, but there are people that feel that I'm their enemy. But I don't hate anybody. But there are people that don't like me. But me, I don't hate them. The only person that doesn't have enemy is a useless man. Am I speaking to somebody here? It's only when you are useless and stupid. There are people that feel I'm, I'm spoiling things for them. There are people that feel that I'm, 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 I'm spoiling things for them. So they will hate me. But I don't hate them. Why would I hate you? When I hate you, I'm not doing you. I'm doing me. Look at it. He says, for faith walketh by what? Talk to me. Talk to me, church. Talk to me, everybody. But faith walketh how? Faith walketh how? If there is anybody you are not greeting, stop confessing. Nothing will happen. Even if he's a native doctor that say, I will kill you. Tell him, sir, good morning, sir. Kill me. When you come out in the morning, you say, sir, I love you, the love of God, though, in Jesus' name. He said, I will kill you. He said, thank you, sir. The woman said, for this house, I will show you. He said, mommy, Chuku Gozeyogi, please, show me. The people say, prophet, you, this thing I say, it's too hard. I can't do this one, no. You must do it. Sir, what if I greet her five times and she refuses to answer? Keep greeting. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you want to declare? talking to you, talk to neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you want to declare and have the things you say? You must walk in love. When you greet the people that greet you, it's not love. Love is when you greet the man that does not greet you. You're not hearing me. Am I communicating here? Even my worst enemies I give to them, ask Melody. Even my worst enemies I give to them. I can go out of my way to give them. Sometimes I can borrow to give them. I'm telling you, people that want my downfall, not people that if they give them a chance, they will be, they will do their worst, but they can't because they know me. I will tell it. I'm not speaking to somebody here, but I can still go out of my way to be a blessing to them. I'm telling you, I don't like you, but I want the things I say to work. I. I will not come to your house and eat, but I will greet you. 
and when I see you, I will hold no grudges against you. But if you give me drink, I will throw one for gota. Because I know that that drink may be poisoned. Am I talking to a child of God here? Yeah. When I say love, I didn't say go home and sit and eat with them. You will die. Oh. Daddy said we should love one another. Can you hear she that? Help me look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if there is anybody you have never forgiven or you have not forgiven, you will not walk by faith. Pastor Usman is as worse as that. It's as worse as that. It's as worse. It's as bad as that. It's not even bad. It's worst. One time someone offended me. Seriously. Did certain things. Very great harm. I said to God, I said, God, even you, you understand. Because I need to. He said to me, he said, Galatians 5 verse 6. You're a man of faith. You're a faith giant. Almost all you do, 90% is faith. He said, you choose to bear grudges with this man or to have results. Then that was when I knew it's not about God, now it's about me. Educate. When you forgive, it's not about God, it's about who? It's about who? It's about who? It's about who? Look at neighbor, say neighbor, when you forgive, I'm talking to you, say neighbor, when you forgive, it's not about God. It's about you. And let me share with you a mystery. The Bible says, for a good man, I won't read that, for a good man, out of the treasures of his heart, brings out good things. For a bad man, out of the treasures of his heart, brings out bad things. When you read down, Matthew, the Bible says, Jesus said, for every idle word the man speaks, he will give account. So what it means is that by your words, you bring out the things in your heart. What you bring out from your heart are not thoughts. They are things. They are things. The things, the, what you bring out from your heart, they are not what? They are what? They are things, yes. He said, by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. It's not literal justification and condemnation. It means that whatever will happen to you in your life is as a result of your word. Whether you will live well on earth is your word. Whether you will be condemned in life and in hell is your word. So if my heart is the center, control center of my life, I cannot allow, allow unforgiveness to dwell there. That is why, look at me, that is why I am, I don't know, I am very intentional about who I relate with. I'm a very humble person, but once I sense disrespect, I will cut you off like I don't know you. You'll be wondering, what did I do? I don't know you, you don't know me, I've not met you before. But we greet, we laugh. But you can't call me, I can't call you. You reply me, I won't talk to you. Because I don't want anything that will spoil my heart. Am I communicating here? A man of God climbed the altar one day. As he carried the mic, he was about to sing. They fired him stroke. On an altar, paralyzed. Huh? Paralyzed! Listen, the prayer warriors carried him. I'm telling you, this is not. They carried him from the altar. They took him to somewhere to pray for him as they were praying. You know all those, those kind of prophecy. <gasps> so, Olada, see, I don't know how to speak all those things. Is that Nisia? Man, I am a person to wear with but now on where on your snog bar or tupu or lani nili or something. The man said, Over my dead body, give me volume. He said, Over my dead body. I didn't come back to discuss. He said, Over my dead body, he said, I will not forgive. When you go, this is my voice, you tell me to a discussion manager. I'm not a discussion manager. He said, over my dead body, I will not forgive. Over my dead body, I won't forgive. Now, the moment he climbed the stage, they fired him, they got him. Why? Because he exposed himself. Now, who is losing? Is it the person that offended him or he? It is him. I will now come and stand before the idol of your family and I will refuse to forgive you. I'm a Are you aware? Are you aware there are people that carry death sentences and they come to judge? Especially a minister like me that God has given a mandate to cancel death. I'm, I'm, let me tell you, when you see a man walking with a, a mark of death, be careful. Because sometimes when you deliver that person, they will come for your head. It's a very dangerous walk. Sir, when someone has been marked by darkness, run away from them. 
One thing you, you should know about Satan is that he does not forgive. So if you must be an effective deliverance minister, your heart must be pure before God. I lose you, I lose you, and there's unforgiveness in your heart. You will lose, oh, but they will come for you. And when they come for you, no amount of binding and casting will stop. They will get you. Why? Your heart has been defiled. Lift your hand. Say, anyone that I have vowed not to forgive, I forgive you now. Say it loud. Say, say it, I mean, say, anyone in my heart that offended me, that offended me to the point that I said, I will not forgive. Right now, I lose you from my heart. I forgive you. Make it a prayer for two seconds. I lose you and I forgive you. Pray. I lose you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Keep praying. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. I have just two minutes. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. I reject bitterness. Shout it loud. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be bitter. Can you say it loud? Say, in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be bitter. I will not be bitter. Madam, even if they're your husband, you must forgive. Or else, all these things we have been preaching will be a waste. A woman came to me and said to me, Sister, I caught my husband sleeping on my matrimonial bed with another woman. Just that I went to market, I didn't travel home. I said, my dad, go and forgive him. He said, that is why I don't like you. <laughs> See, that is why I don't like you. You always, you always tell people the things that they don't want to hear. I said, what do you want me to tell you? The thing you want to hear? If the thing you want to hear, you'd have told yourself and you'd be free. Am I communicating here? She says, sir, I'm, I'm trying to return the bride price. The Bible says that um, you, there is no divorce except on the case of infidelity. I said, madam, you are right, but go and forgive. She was crying like a baby. She forgave that man. Two weeks later, she took him. God gave her her own child. Why was the man doing it? Because the man said, if you can't give birth for me, what are you doing in my house? The man says, since I'm not useful, let me go. I say, madam, you will be there. I'm a man, bro. I'm a man, you How can I prophesy to you, give you dates, and that is the week Satan tell you to pack out? Can't you see the manipulation? If you, see, you say, yes, the Bible says, but you must be sensitive. Hear this. L let me say this to you. The Bible says, no weapon fashioned against you shall what? Someone say fashioned. Now, weapons are not set, they are fashioned, they are tailor made. Weapons are not sent. They are what? What, what? what does the word fashion mean? They are what? Tailor made. The weapon that gets you cannot get me. Oh God, open their eyes. So for a weapon to prosper, it has to be fashioned. The one that will fit you. Somebody like me now, eh? you, by the grace of God, I'm not boasting. You can't, you can't tempt me with money. You can't. Look at me. I can go broke and be comfortable. I can go. I'm not telling you. I'm not like, I can go broke. I, I will not even feel it because I know that anything can happen anytime. But I, I did vex. I did vex. But I'm working on you. Am I communicating here? You know, when you see, when, when someone is very humble, they, 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 they make sure you don't disrespect them for their humility. 
Am I communicating here? And you'll be a fool to disrespect a man because he's brought himself down. You're not in his level. And you know it, you're not in his level and you can't get there. Unless God helps you. And he's relating with you and you are disrespecting him. Something is wrong with you. Like now, my spiritual mentor will now be talking to me and I'll now disrespect him because he's talking to me. If he blocks my number, he will remember that someone like me exists. Because in the common man, no, with him, 100. I'm telling you, that's the way you think and you will remain humble. Are you aware there are people that if they delete your number now, they won't know they lost a human being? <laughs> oh, when they had deleted a number, they the Haga a man or mad or half or half. In fact, it's a problem that left them. Why will you be raising children for such a person? Are you okay? Stand to your feet, speak in tongues. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Shalabara Dabaya. I didn't come to preach today, I just came to give instructions from the Lord. I came to give instructions from the Lord. Lima Mante Koporo Sakapaya. You want to talk to God? You want, I don't know what God has, might have said to you now. I don't know what the Spirit of the Lord might have said to you. But you want to talk to the Lord. You want to talk to the Lord. You want to talk to the Lord. Ay, 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 ay. Go ahead, pray in the Spirit. Tell him, search my heart, O God. Search my heart, O God. Try my heart and purify me of every defilement. Can you pray? 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 Search my heart, oh God. Search my heart. Purify me. Cry out to the Lord this morning. We are about to share the grace. I'm, I'm serious. Site nansovua. Fulani na juusi. Ibawa ni kiti. Chine keki. Teta kwa nove. Na ihe pukobi. Ebuli idaka. Ekando diro. Omo mani jiranya. Search my heart, oh God. Purify. Purify. Can you can you can you cry to the Lord? Can you cry to the Lord? Can you purify my heart? Purify, purify, purify. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let me say this to you. One of the greatest things you can do to yourself eh, is calling yourself in order. Is what? You're going to tell the Lord, Father, I don't know what this man of God might have said, but it's just as though he's talking to me. And for this thing to hit me like this, it means that you prepare this word for me. Lord, I don't know what I'm struggling with. Is it unbelief? Is it malice? Is it unforgiveness? 
Is it lost? Look at me. Let me tell you something. One of the worst things that can happen to a man. Hear this. Every man of faith, every giant of faith is a man that knows how to use the power of their visualization. Someone says visualization. I want to teach you something, but I don't know if I should teach you. No matter what I teach you, there are some things I want to teach you, so don't worry. You know, you know there are people, once they learn small things, they will start half. For one, no problem. For this, the Bible says, to him more is given, more is what? If you are giving, when I see testimonies, there are treasures I will give you. There are treasures. Are you aware? God said to Abraham, he said, I will bless and I will make you a blessing. You will not just be blessed, but through you, others will be blessed. You can look at this man and say, I don't want this man to suffer again. That one is not, is not. We will get there. Maybe I will give it to my pastors. It's light. It's light. It's light. Man of God, please listen to me. When words like this come, don't, don't fight with it. One of the worst things that can happen to a man of faith is when your, when, when your imagination has been corrupt. Let me summarize this. I told you that when faith produces results is when your visualization, someone say visualization. What is visualization? Seeing the miracle before it happens. The woman of the show of Lord, she saw herself healed. He said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be what? So she already in her mind imagined what it means to be made whole. She accepted that there is a possibility that she can be made whole. And she saw it. Are we together? And then she said it. Now when miracles happen is when your speech, your visualization and your action, when the three of them align, you have a miracle. Especially actions. Some of you, God is going to give you instructions in your dream. Take certain things. Do it for the kingdom. Don't, don't struggle with it. That's your next level. As you are declaring, as you are declaring, instructions will come to cement that thing you are declaring. Don't struggle with it. Nobody needs anything from you, but it's an instruction. When God wanted to change Abraham's life, he came to him and he tried him. But the word is try. Someone say try. For every new level, you are tried for it. It's only a stupid employer that will employ you without testing you. Number two, even if you have been employed, when they want to give you promotion, you, there is something they call promotional exam. Is it true? That you have been in my company and that you are loyal does not mean I will promote you. I'm, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to myself. Sir, you are, you, you are a civil servant. Even though you have been faithful, before they promote you, you will write a promotional exam. If you fail it, you will not be promoted. You will wait for another season. There are so many of you, the Holy Ghost, in the whispers of your night, has given you trials and then you failed. You take up your sword. Number two. See, there is something prevalent in these days. If you open your phone like this, you mistakenly, you want to read Facebook, you will see a naked person. Am I lying? You're going on the road, you want to buy soap. You will see a naked person. Am I lying? You stop doing your face like you don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, Allah. Then you. Come on, get out. You that I can see your secrets. Okay, you now say, okay, let me go and read news. Let me know what is happening between Israel and Hamas. You will see a naked person. Now, do you know how much they spend in putting those things there? They spend billions. Now, let me tell you why they, they put those things there. What they want to do is to defy the power of your visualization. I'm not joking with you. I'm telling you. Because, because, hear this. The Bible says, guide your heart with what? For out of it proceeds what? Your life is a reflection of your heart. See, if you like, imagine miracle. Imagine testimony. Say it, act it. If your heart is, oh God, I don't know why, I'm, why I want to say this thing now. It's, 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 okay, let me say it. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Now, the word speaking there is not ordinary speaking. It's not narrowly speaking. Because you, you can say what you don't mean. Am I lying? Am I lying? Then if, if it's that, the word of God is a lie. I mean, sometimes. I, I so but this man, he will say, Daddy, give me 50,000. Give me 50,000. I'll say, tomorrow, come. Tell him I'm not around. 
it's not, am I communicating here? So there are some things you will say, you don't mean it, am I lying? You can tell your child I will kill you. Do you mean you want to give him? You are just angry. So the word speaker there is not naturally speaking. It, oh. Anytime I'm speaking and I'm having restrictions, maybe there are people that are not ready for it. Okay, what it means is that the things that you speak will become effective. That's what the Bible says. Abel, even though he was dead, yet his blood speaketh. What it means is that his voice was heard. Now, you can speak, you can speak, but if what you are speaking is not in abundance in your heart, you are talking, you are not speaking. So, if you must speak and be heard in the spirit, the things you say must be what? In abundance abundance in your heart. Not that you have planted the word. It will be in abundance in your heart. So you keep pouring water in the vessel until it overflows. Then you can now speak. So when you now have pornography in one side, you now have malice in one side, you now have Mama Nkechi say, I will never succeed. God will turn that will kill her in one side. You now say, I declare. I decree and declare. They must be say, leave him. Just give him small things. Give him suicide. He will stay there. Because if someone like okay did not say anything, he will kill us with prayer. Just give him small miracles. Am I communicating here? He say, if, if, if this man, you, this man is a very stubborn man. This man is a very man. He say, <laughs> prophet, you must pray for me. You are my father. You will pray. I'm asking somebody here. So they will say, they will say, uh, permit him to see small light. In your mind, they now they are taking your bed right. They are taking your bed right. Because if nothing happens, you will kill them with prayer. Am I communicating here? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your heart must be pure. I don't know who I'm talking to. This could be the reason why the things you are saying is not happening. What we are saying is not a scam, but there are laws. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, purify my heart. Go ahead and pray. I want to pray for you. Pray. Pray. You just have just a few minutes to pray. Purify! 